uh, after watching the video about how do you measure the specific latent heat of fusion, uh, maybe I explain a little bit more detail. Remember that if we want to find out the specific latent heat of fusion, that means L. Actually, um, we have to find out Q and M by using an experiment. To do so, uh, we have to use a setup to measure how much energy transferred to change ice into water without any change of temperature, remember. And then, to find out uh, how much uh, ice melted into ice. Uh, sorry, how much ice melted into water. Uh, so, you can see the setup. Here, we have the geometer. Remember that the geometer to help us to find out how much energy transferred to the heater. And we assume, or the gachi, assume the energy from the heater totally transferred to melt the ice into water. Okay, equal to the amount of energy transferred to melt the ice into water. And also, you can see here is a beaker. To find out the mass of water melted into water in the experimental set. But bear in mind, at the same time, not just the heater melt the ice into water. Actually, you can see uh, the air also hotter than the ice. Which means that when the heater melts the ice, at the same time, the air also melts the ice. So which means that this beaker collected the mass of water melted by heater and air. So it is an error. To eliminate the error, caused by the ice melted by air, we have to use the control apparatus. Remember the control set. Uh, you can see equal amount of ice inside the funnel and also put a heater. But only one difference. It is the heater does not collect to the power supply. So mainly the control set help us to find out the mass of ice melted into water by air only. Okay, uh, it is important. It can help us to eliminate the error and then make a more accurate result. Okay. So you can see, your textbook mentioned this one. The control apparatus is necessary because some ice absorbs energy from surrounding. Uh, yes, it is the reason. But when we really carry out the experiment using the control set, we cannot measure how much energy absorbed by ice from surrounding. We cannot measure the energy absorbed by ice from surrounding. But we can use another way to do so, that is, using the control apparatus to find out the mass of ice melted by surrounding. And for the, uh, for the uh, experimental set, the beaker collect the mass of water uh, melted from ice by the heater and by the surrounding at the same time. So if we want to find out a specific latent heat of ice, remember that this Q over M, the M represented the mass of ice melted by heater only. Heater only. 
So we have to use the mass of water collected by the beaker in the experimental set minus the mass of water inside the experimental set so that we can get the mass of uh, water really melted by ice, he melted by the heater. So you can see example 2. Uh, when we really carry out the experiment, we can collect the data. Mass of water in the experimental beaker, mass of water in the control beaker. Look at that. We should find out the mass of water melted by the heater. We should use M1 minus M2, not just M1. Uh, uh, think about if we do not have the control beaker in the experiment, the experimental LF, experimental LF will become higher or or lower. Think about this question. If we do not have the control beaker, what will be happen about the experimental specific latent heat of fusion? Greater or higher than usual? 即係話，如果我哋真係冇咗呢個 control set 嘅時候，究竟我哋做實驗揾出嚟嘅答案咧，會係比正常大咗，定係比正常細咗咧？啊、uh, ，and then we can find out the energy supply by use the joule meter reading. Okay. Uh, initial and final, and then do the subtraction, the total amount of energy need. And then you can see, using the data, you can find out Q over M, and then to find out the value. Remember this one, which is higher, higher than the standard value. 3 from 3, 4 times 10 to the power 5. A joule per kilogram. And usually, our experimental value will be higher. Can you suggest any reason uh, to explain why the experimental value usually higher than the standard value? Try. You can do it. Also, there are some more points you should note. For example, we should use crushed ice. Okay, you use this soy bank. Remember to increase the contact surface between the heater and the ice. That means much or as much as energy from the heater can totally transfer to melt the ice to minimize the error. And also, we should use melting ice, which means that the ice should be at zero degree Celsius. Why? Think about when we want to find out latent heat. We want to find out the energy, remember, should be the potential energy without any change of temperature to melt the ice. So think about if the ice, it does not equal zero degrees Celsius. For example, if we use minus five degrees Celsius ice and then use the same setup, which means that the heater give out the energy does not only melt the, uh, melt the ice but also need to rise its temperature at the beginning before melting the ice it will become an error or think about if we really use minus 5 degrees Celsius ice will the experimental value greater or lower that the standard value again. Think about it. You can also do it. And finally, we should ensure that the drip way, drip way, okay, is the same before and after switching off the heater. Uh, actually, it means uh, we should ensure that all the energy from the heater totally absorbed by the ice and then melt it into water and then also maximize the energy transfer 
minimize the error as well. Okay, so I uh, hope that we use about 10 minutes to help you to have a quick look about the setup to find out the specific latent heat of fusion uh, experimentally. Uh, and then hope that you can also uh, understand it and then solve the problem afterward. Okay, thank you.